No. Yeah, I told her to call in. Mm -hmm. uh, she's one of your, one of your, uh, send it on over hand. Call you on the air with your question or comment. Yeah, it's how are you doing, Steve? How do you know, sir? Yeah, I like to ask Dr. Smith, uh, back when he first got started, how was black doctors accepted in their society? Black doctors were not accepted in their society. Uh, they were not. The black patient, uh, the black patient and the black physicians was not accepted. Uh, from what I heard, Dr. Smith, they said black physicians were not except even at, 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 at hospitals here in the state of Mississippi. Absolutely. In fact, some hospitals in the state did not admit black physicians to the staff at all. Wow. At all. Wow. And uh, even Mississippi Baptist, when I came here, had a, a unit called the Green Annex. In fact, I think it was, I don't want, I want to give you correct information, in 19... 58 or 59, they moved black patients from the basement to the green attic. Wow. Uh, it was a unit that was exclusive. Set aside. Set aside. For black folks only. Black folks only. Call me like up the there. What's your question or comment? comment? For colored only. For colored only. Smith uh, is from Washington, D.C. He's from Washington, D.C. Purple and gold every day, huh? Every day. You make a kidney. No, I don't eat 
I got some off the knife. And one thing about people that went to Oak Point, they love Oak Point. But, but he told me, he told me, he says, look, you need to go to Tougaloo if you want to go in the West. And, and he told you to go to Tougaloo. So we go to Tougaloo. That's a good author night that would tell you that. Okay? I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> so, and, and at that time... Um, Hold on, Carla. I didn't know or didn't understand, but Alcon had an excellent record of, of, uh, of producing doctors in 1953. Mm -hmm. A, a uh, president by the name of White, that we don't hear anything about now, spoke out in the Civil Rights Movement. And many of the liberal arts programs of people in liberal arts left off on. Wow. And that really didn't come back until the 60s, late 60s. Wow. Carl, you're on the air. What's your question or comment? Good evening, Al. Good evening, sir. How are you doing, sir? Good. Uh, Dr. Smith, uh, what, would, what would you say the ratio of uh, patients that your friends, black, white, and others? Uh, now it's amazing. One percent Hispanic, about the same percentage of whites, maybe two, three white, and the rest of them are black. Okay. Sir, it's interesting you asked that question. I was at the clinic uh, just last Tuesday for a visit, and while I was there, an Asian group walked in, and I'm like, well, look at that. And then a Hispanic group walked in. I'm talking about while I was sitting there, you know, the time that I waited to see the doctor. Then yeah. a white lady walked in. I'm like, look at this. Okay. We're talking about multicultural here. And then uh, some older blacks came in. And then some young blacks came in. And the, the Asian group ranged from older to younger. And the Hispanic family ranged from older to younger, too. I was I was amazed just just sitting there at that time. Four different racial groups that I could identify visually came in. I'm not sure if any Africans came Thank in. Thank you for your call, sir. Pale, but. Okay, uh, do you have any uh, one question? Do you have to have to have an interpreter? Yes. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Carla. We're not playing. We're not. Carla, you're on the air. What's your question or comment? Monica, how are you doing, Pastor Jackson? Hey, Pastor Jackson. Pastor Jackson, how you doing, sir? Overworked and underpaid. There you go. Join the family. So what, 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 uh, if, if any, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Let me say, Dr. Robert Smith has been my family doctor ever since I know him when he first came to the Jackson. And uh, I feel a lot of pain for his wife before she before she passed, did a lot of work for Dr. Smith and his building down there. And Dr. Smith has hope so many students over at Jackson State was his primary shame. He ought to get a gold medal for that. And one thing about him, if he can't help you, he ain't gonna harm you. He got healing hands. He's another Dr. Barnes. I believe Dr. Barnes got that from him. Possibly. When you talk to Dr. Robert Smith, he told me years ago, and uh, and I want to thank you, Doc, for what all you have done. You will always be my doctor, and we love you. And I want you to know I'm just as close to your eyeglasses as on your eyes. <laughs> thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, thank, thank you, thank you, Pastor you. Jackson. Yeah. Thank you. Um, continue, Doctor. But we're just enjoying this. I mean, we. I'm like, what did I say? We're not going to get all of this in. No, we're not going to get all of this in. Twelve hundred dollars for the cow. Twelve hundred dollars for the cow. In 1948. Is that right? Yes, 1948. That's correct, and that's a fact. But the important thing is. When, of course, my daddy marched me down to the Posgary Bank and established my account, which turned up in the final analysis to be some grief for him. <laughs> it was grief for him? Yeah. Uh, you know, I was, 
Wait me a man. I had money. Oh, in other words, you could say some things and people would listen. Yeah. You know what? I think I should still got some of this $25. How old were you? 13? Well, 14. I can't tell, but anyway, the important thing is, and the important thing is, uh, it looked like, particularly it was in reality. You all know the statistics. In the state of Mississippi in 1963 or 4. Well, I don't because I was born in 63. I was one year old. Only three or 4,000 blacks in the state uh, was registered voters. Wow. And my parents was one of them too. Wow. Uh, and they felt that my dad used to tell them, you know, say in the community to other blacks, uh, a man is not a man unless he's registered to vote. I bet you didn't make a lot of friends that way, did you? Of course, not back then. And uh, but the important thing is, when I went, I went to Tougaloo to be a physician, and one of the first things that I gravitated to was the NACP, and I became a youth member of the NACP. Hell, it wasn't wasn't because. I was an activist, or, you know, you, they call me now an activist, <laughs> but it was because of those basic values. Wow. Uh, you know what I mean? Yes, sir. I and, uh, and in addition to... In other words, you were not going to leave home and not become part of that. That was what you left home with. Yes. So it was a natural thing for you to do, to belong to this organization that's going to promote not only yourself, your family, but your community it's too. It's a community, yes, exactly. And you didn't have to think twice about that. And what, you know, can't, I heard about the fear, I was, I was a Tulu. Mm -hmm. Tulu uh, has produced some, some scholars, and we look at it. But I was a Tulu when there was, was assassinations, of, yes, sir. it was all around. The and, marches. And uh, I was a Tulu doing the hangings and all the See, we don't get all of that in the history books. Okay, the things can. he's telling us about okay, now. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I think I've heard he about is, a he lot of hangings. Himself. Right, right. A lot of hangings. I mean, people wouldn't even talk about it, would they? Hanging just just to want to register to vote or don't even think about uh, voting. Uh, uh, hell, I end up in Woodfield. <laughs> okay. I'm serious. Yeah. There were people who got sent to Woodfield because they were they tried to teach voter registration in their community. He must be crazy. So they had a committee. So if someone came to your house and said, and, and said well, we'll, we're going to take her at Whitfield, there would be nothing you could do about it. And nothing you could do about it. All you had to do was get the signature of two physicians. And back then, in my era, uh, that was no problem. If I called up, say for instance, if I was a white physician, Mm -hmm. And you had been to see me. I got this crazy gal over here. Mm -hmm. uh, would you sign this certificate? Mm -hmm. And you'd end up in with it. Did you hear the word he used, gal? Mm -hmm. That's, that, that's pretty common yeah. terminology yeah. for yeah. what they use to call us, you know. Uh, just, gals, like, just, yeah. 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 just like in the yeah. movie, uh, uh, The Color Purple. You gonna buy something, gal? When the white man said, you want to buy something, gal? Uh, I have some yeah. older uh, male relatives that used to call me that. Well, anyway, I was fortunate. I was there uh, when this strict uh, separation of the community took place around Dr. Brown versus education and got a chance to uh, be and hear people like Dr. Stringer, Dr. McCoy. Is that J.W. Stringer of the uh, Lodge? Yes. Same person. And then there was a string of dentists up in Columbus. I, I, I'm not naming all of them. T. R. M. Howard and uh, people, yeah, that of that nature. Uh, they were invited, and uh, Maker Evers. Mm -hmm. Those were the people mm -hmm. who I naturally gravitated to mm -hmm. when I was a two. Besides mm -hmm. doing first things mm -hmm. first, mm -hmm. and there was. My major in mm -hmm. uh, 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 chemistry, mm -hmm. huh? chemistry mm -hmm. and biology. So it's just a natural thing for me. And when I got to went on to medical school to Howard, just a natural progression. 
Mm-hmm. Let's take this call right quick, I swear. Go ahead, Carla, what's your question or comment? Yes, I would like to ask this uh, to Dr. Smith. Um, do they have a street name after the Nazi Robert Smith? Yes, they and do. if not, I don't understand why. They do. They have Dr. Robert Smith Parkway. She didn't know about the Parkway. Dr. Robert Smith Parkway. Okay. Yes. Okay. And he he, he, he is he is a legend in itself. Thank you for calling yes, me. Yes, he is. Thank I'm you. just happy to call and ask that. Oh, yeah. Thank you, Miss Sylvia. All right. All right. This parkway is right behind Jackson State. Mm-hmm. leads from, uh, from um, Gallatin. Gallatin. Coming up that hill. Uh-huh. Going around. Uh-huh. That's, that's, that's we, can that's 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 we can't say thank you enough. We, we really we don't have enough we time. Got, we got nine more minutes, Dr. Smith. Well, uh, well let, I, we can pick up the rest of the story can, whenever you get ready to come back. We can hear the rest I, of the story. And I want to thank uh, Miss uh, Betsy Barnes. I mean, because whenever I call Miss Betsy Barnes, she said, I'm Michael. Let me talk with him. <laughs> she said, let me talk with him to see what's on his schedule. So, Ms. Betsy uh-huh. Bond, thank you thank so you much. Thank you so much, ma'am. Can you do it again? Because we, we're not going to get but a yeah. little bit of the story today. No, let's let's do this on the calendar. Yeah. Let me look at the calendar. We just don't want to miss Betsy. We don't want to overwork him, but we I do want to get the story. The calendar, we, uh, when are you going to put this on paper between two uh, in a binder, in a book? We got Dr. Kimberly Smash next week. So. When are you going to do that? Oh, wow. your book. You got yeah. You got, they have, they have a book. A book. It's coming out. In, it's coming it out at the end of this year. <laughs> Come on, Doctor Smith. You see it coming out at the end of the year. Isn't it? Yes. <laughs> you got the editor on with that. You got your publisher and everything. Take this last call. Don't make me laugh. <laughs> <laughs> Calling on the air. Well, What's your question or comment, year, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, I uh, just got one quick question. Uh, Mike joined the show. Uh, Doctor Smith enjoying it. What, to Dr. Smith, what advice would you give to the younger generation of newly coming doctors to assist them in, you know, helping them to come along? And I'll hang up and, and, and hear you coming. Hold on for the answer to that. We'll get this other call, but this is the last call. Okay. Thank I'll... you for your call. Okay. Thank you, sir. Go ahead, call. Or what's, you're the last call. Or what's your question or comment? Um. Mm-hmm. And and I just want to uh, call in and um, just let everybody know that uh, how much the family as a whole appreciate and love our cousin, uh, Dr. Smith, and um, he, he did so get my mom's uh, funeral in uh, Dorothy Kendrick, and uh, also he was supposed to be at my husband's uh, funeral, you know, uh, Nelson Atkinson, and um, when your family loves you, then that's that speaks volume of a person as well as their uh, friends and everybody else. But I just want to uh, call in and express my sentiments also. And my husband Nelson uh, Atkinson and Dorothy Kendrick, and we had Solutions Talk Show on WMPR. Thank you so much, ma'am. Thank, Thank you for your Thank call. You. Thank you, dear. Thank you. All right. Dr. Smith, you want to answer that first question, Rose? Yeah. I, I remember that first question yes, because sir. it's one that concerns uh, me. And, uh, and I wondered when I was applying to medical school uh, why they wanted uh, a reference uh, other than from my major professors. And, and and back that time, more than likely, that person was your preacher. I also uh, was concerned about moral character and all those kinds of things. There, besides skills, uh, besides your skills, uh, and I was also taught that, and you are, I just yesterday was on what we call CME, and I have to have 40 hours of CME every year to stay active wow. in a hospital environment. You're going, if you're going to work in a hospital, you're going to be required, uh, and just to keep your license active, to get so much CME. But uh, a man or woman who goes into medicine uh, needs to stay rooted uh, in 
uh, moral values and concern about the social determinants of health. Now, uh, when if I do ever have an opportunity to come back, I didn't have an you opportunity. You will have an opportunity to come back next uh, and talk about the social determinants of health. When I came, when I came back, the social determinants of health. Social determinants of health. When I came back in the sixties, uh, the, the major social determinants of health was uh, poor housing, inadequate housing, water. Uh, people who didn't have screens and doors, substandard housing, immunization, lack of immunization, non immunization level among black folks was probably 40%. Uh, malnutrition uh, and things like uh, intestinal parasites from children. Wow. Uh, <laughs> now, that has changed a lot. Uh, it's changed a lot in the sense that uh, alcohol, drugs, uh, homicide, suicide. You could be like, we have a couple minutes. Not cut off, but I just wanted to have you ever been in your lifespan been engaged in a pandemic like we are now. Well, what do you say about a pandemic? Oh, yes. Uh, see, when I came out, uh, we still had polio. Polio? Yeah. We still had polio. Kids and young people were dying from polio. Uh, I was a national poster child for passing out. This man has just been a godsend to the state of That's Mississippi. That's why I say you don't have to ask him any questions. <laughs> just, just let, let him, him talk. talk. Okay? Yeah. Yeah. That's what we uh, do. Yeah. yeah. And then uh, we haven't gotten to Howard well, University yeah, yet. Yes. No, but go ahead. But go yeah. ahead. Well, you know, Polio. Community diseases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Measles, bugs, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Dogs. Wow. Well, yeah. Without yeah. immunizations, those things would kill children. Yeah. Absolutely. I think I almost uh, went out of here on one of those. Wow. Yeah. When so I was a little girl. Was wow. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. uh, infant and mortality. Infant and maternal mortality. Mm -hmm. uh, in Bolivar County, and I don't want to pick on Bolivar, but infant mortality uh, was as high as 68% uh, per 100,000 live births. Wow. Maternal <laughs> mortality <laughs> wow. was something like 10 or 15%. And you spent much of your young um, professional days in Baltimore County, isn't that yes, correct? Yes, exactly. Wow. And did you what under which school did you operate? Did you were you a part of the? Uh, I was uh, a part. I was one of the three principal founders uh -huh. of Community Health Center. Wow. That's what you. That's what you told us once upon a time. Yeah, here. once upon a time. Mm -hmm. um, we, I'm going to pick that up. We're going to, we, we, we're going to start there time. next time. Yeah, community good. Health Center. Time. Community yeah. Health Center. Yeah. The even concept that. The concept, the that, broad concept now uh -huh. uh, that has grown to include uh, over 30 million Americans, 300,000 of them here in Mississippi. Here in, in, in Mississippi. That's in Mount Bayou. That's what that was, right? In Mount Bayou. Mount Bayou. Yeah. Yeah. I was never learning out of town, so I got to get you back. I'm going to call Ms. Betsy Bonner and let her know uh, sometime in the next month. And at that time, Dr. Smith, we're not going to take any calls. We're just going to let you talk. You said one of three uh, founding members of the concept. The, the whole national concept. Of community health centers. Centers. That means that we have the right to have access. You have a right to have access. To immunizations, to shots, to, to shots. health care, right. to doctors, nurses, right. you can, hospitals, You have a right, and you take my, uh, I got a stick now, <laughs> uh -huh. and uh, if, if somebody uh, don't give you service. You hit them with the stick. You hit them with the stick. <laughs> you shoot them with the gun. <laughs> <laughs> We are out of time. We have been enjoying ourselves with Dr. You Robert are Smith. coming back if I have to come and get you. Okay? Yeah, of Central nice. Mississippi Health right. Services. Dr. Smith, we, we, we love you, sir. You are a pillar of the community. Thank you.
Thank you for your service, sir. We stand in salute. We stand in awe. This is a yeah. what's his name in that little guy on the on the TV? They call him a son child or what kind of child they call him? You know what? You know. Well, let me also thank uh, I thank Mr. Howard Sanders Jr. Uh, he was the one who got me here today. Yes, sir. Mr. This gentleman standing out here, right there. Right there. <laughs> Kudos to you, my brother. Kudos. Yeah. To you gonna do this again, right? We got to. Yeah, we got to. I'm going to talk with Miss Desi Barnes. He, he was also instrumental in helping me get here. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I need help now in all whole uh, yeah. fever. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know, so get in line. There you go. Lot of <laughs> we're running over time now. The, the, the show is, the, the, it's uh, a lot of us there. Exactly. In fact, the next week we'll have Dr. Kimberly Smash. Uh, 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 another uh, one of your followers who, who really love you, Dr. Smith. We all love you. But right now, I want to hear this. The show that's coming on next, I, I just listened to it going on in the house. So kudos to you, Dr. Smith. Kudos to the show that's coming in. Folks, take us out of here. Dr. Smith is coming back, Jackson. He's coming back.